Welcome to our devos this week. We have been talking about private revolu- resolutions and how they bring about public results. The things that God wants us to do often happen and they forge within us in private. And then outwardly, people see those things coming to pass and that produces results. God rewards those results. Well, today, I want to give you something that, again, sounds kind of counterintuitive. But if you have a big goal, if you have something big that God wants you to do, if you're like, okay, this is it, I want you to do something that maybe you've never thought of. If you have a large resolution, start with a small time frame, a small time frame. This especially is true when it's something that you're not used to doing. There's a, um, an adage of Alcoholics Anonymous, and one of the ways that they negotiate and talk about their addiction is when they look at their track record, they're focused on today. And so what they'll say is, you know, uh, so you're never going to drink again. No, I'm not drinking today. I'm not going to drink today because forever sounds so cumbersome and it's overwhelming. If you have this addiction, this idea that you're going to be without this thing, the idea is frightening, frankly. And any of you that's ever struggled with any addiction knows it. If you've ever struggled with any kind of um, uh, substance whatsoever, even something as simple as like if you, for those of you that might have practiced from other churches, Lent, you know, the 40-day period where you're supposed to give something up, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing if you want to give it up for spiritual reasons, not because the church is telling you to, but because you're doing something as a fast in honor of God. The idea of you giving up television for 40 days, the idea of you giving up social media for 40 days, giving up sugar for 40 days. Holy moly, that's like a mountain. It's scary. But there's something interesting when you take a small fixed time frame for something that's a really, really big resolution. Daniel does it. When Daniel is uh, confronted with having to go about taking the king's diet, he asks the chief eunuch specifically for this amount of time. He says, test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink only. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. He goes, look, I'm not asking for forever. I'm not saying one day we're not just going to go crazy and eat a half a pound of bacon. But for the next 10 days, can we just go kale? Can we just do kale for 10 days? Can we just do, you know, carrots and water and just let us, you know, you decide after 10 days. And he starts with a small time frame. I love that God includes this language because it gives us permission when we're making our own resolutions to say, you know what, maybe we should start off doing this thing in a small way, starting off with a small um, win. Uh, there's a book, and I can't recommend the book enough, and I know I shouldn't endorse books, but I read a lot, and I, you know, this book, everybody's recommended. It's called Atomic Habits. Pastor Mike and I did like a series based on some of the principles of this book back in, I think it was like 2016 or 15, but anyway, the, the book, the idea of the Atomic Habits is whatever you want to do, the habits that you do that you try to adapt, they have to be small, So if you've never run before saying, I'm going to run a marathon every summer, that's probably not going to be a good habit. But a good habit would be every single morning, I'm going to run for six minutes until I'm really out of breath. Like every morning, I'm going to try for six minutes. So you can like, I can do six minutes, even if you cut it down to three minutes. That's going to be no matter what, every morning, I'm going to do three minutes. Then maybe you'll increase it gradually. But making that habit so small that it's stupid if you miss it, that's actually how you change your life. That's the whole book summed up. It's like those little habits. And then he has things in there about identity and tying your identity to your habits. It's groundbreaking. I really recommend you, have, you read it. If you haven't, you should. But regarding this, When it's something big that God has put on your heart and you're like, I don't know how I could do this. I don't think I can do this for the rest of my life. I don't think I can, you know, do this with my family for the rest of my life. Well, start small and go, okay, God, I I want you to let me do this for just a certain amount of time. I'll be candid with you. Um, And the Holy Spirit wants me to share this with you, I believe. I talked about this years ago when I did my series on anxiety. Uh, For a period in 2016, I had gone through uh, almost a year of debilitating, crippling anxiety attacks every time I would speak. Now, for someone who gets, you know, literally his profession is to publicly speak, and I was training 
people to publicly speak on the side. and That's not a good look. Like, hey, I am deathly afraid of public speaking, and every time I go to do it, I get a panic attack, but I'm going to teach you how to publicly speak. No, it's not a good look. So I remember praying and just asking the Lord, like, I don't know what to do, but I have this strong urge that I wanted to quit the church. I'm like, I can't serve the church doing the thing that the church wants me to do if I'm not able to carry out the responsibilities. It's a disservice to the church. It's hurting them because I don't want to publicly speak. And the Lord put on my heart specifically when I was, you know, in his word and praying that I only needed to go nine or a year. I only needed to go one year. I just needed one year. And I had to make this covenant with him, this promise that I would keep doing what I was doing for one year before I made any kind of decision like that. And that's what I did. I just kept going to the Lord and go, okay, Lord, this is a year. It's been a month. It's been two months. It's been three months. It's been four months. At about five months, I was like, okay, Lord, I don't think I could make the year. At six months, I was like, okay, Lord, where's the eject button? And then it finally took me to nine months. But every day I would pray, God, I just, I'm, I'm going to do this for a year, but I can't do it much more. It's killing me. It's killing me. And then God healed me. So why do I say this? I say this because there's something in your life that God wants you to do. And the idea of you doing it forever is absolutely paralyzing. And that's okay. How about this? How about this? Why don't you just try it for a week? How about you just say, I'm going to, instead of doing something every single day for two hours, why don't you just try it for 10 minutes? If you're not spending any time with your estranged children right now, instead of saying, I'm going to take them away for a month and we're going to go on a vacation, instead, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to have lunch with them once a week. You start small and you make that parameter, the resolution that God puts in your heart and allow him to honor that publicly with the results that you get.